because it's not a twelve hundred dollar turbo. Everybody thinks it can't make any power or anything like that, but it's been proven over and over and over again that it can. Oh shit, guys! Looks like my turbo came in the mail today. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Gotti's Garage. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and below will be a link in the description to this turbocharger. And I'm also proud to say that today's video is sponsored by Max Speeding Rods. Max Speeding Rods sells connecting rods, turbochargers, coilovers, my leveling kit on my Ram. If you guys haven't checked out that video, go check that out. And behind me, as you can see, watching some Adam LZ. But let's get to the turbo. So the turbo is already opened. It got delivered to my sister's house. During the winter, I do work on my vehicles in my sister's house because I don't, my garage is too small. Plus, we live in upper uh, Michigan and we get a lot of snow, so I can't just work outside. <laughs> So this is a GT3582 from Max Speeding Rods that they sent me over for the GSR build. Um, this is obviously China's version of like the Garrett GT3582R. This turbo is perfect for four to six cylinder engines. Supposedly it's capable of boosting horsepower up to 600 horsepower. I, I guess I could believe it. They say it says on there, this is a water and an oil cooled turbo. It is a T3 flange. Um, four bolt flange, so just a regular like a T3, T4 hybrid kind of thing. This is just a T3. This is also an external wastegate turbo, which means it has no internal wastegate. So you're gonna need a turbo manifold with a external wastegate uh, flange on there to be able to control your boost pressure. Um, like I said, this is a water and an oil cooler cooled um, turbo, but anybody like Boosted Boys or anybody else who actually runs this, they don't actually hook the coolant lines into this turbo. Um, I don't know if I will, I might, just because they're there, but I'm not positive on that yet. So the turbine AR on this turbo is a 0.63. The trim is an 84.2 millimeter, and then the compressor is 0.7. So I'm not really honestly sure. I guess we could do maybe like a later video uh, side by side to this and an actual Garrett, and then we can kind of figure it out. But I believe that these are actually smaller than the Garrett's. Um, to clock these turbos, it's really easy. These, they look like 13 millimeters. Um, so 13 millimeter bolts, you just pull these off. You have these like little uh, like brackets that hold the, the housing to the actual turbine or turbo. And you just pull these off and you can, well, you just loosen them and then you can actually clock this whole turbo any way you want. The same with the exhaust housing side. So this is the turbo drain right here. And uh, it comes with a turbo drain gasket as well as a T3 flange gasket. Um, people don't normally use a gasket on these. They seal pretty good. This one, they come with a like little fabric kind of style. Um, don't ever use those because the oil will actually turn that into like a glue, like paste almost like. So you have it on your car for a little while and oil goes through it. The oil actually like soaks into it and breaks it down. I always use a, like a steel um, gasket for this. And then this is also, uh, since this is your drain, this is gonna be like a dash 10. Most people do a 10 or a dash 10 AN fitting for the drain. That way all the oil gets out of there pretty quick. The feed is, I'm pretty sure it's a dash six or dash eight. I don't know, I can't remember exactly, but it's a pretty generic uh, um, fitting resistor right here so too much oil doesn't get through and um, mess with the seals or go through the seals and then it just exits right here right back into the oil pan or but overall style the cast is pretty nice it doesn't have very many pitting or anything like obviously this is um, I think it said it was cast nickel but obviously it is cast you can see the, the pitting inside of it and stuff you can actually sand this down to make it smooth or just powder coat it and as well as this, uh, this is actually looks pretty nice. I think it said it can handle up to like 900 degrees Celsius or something like that, which um, I'm, you know, a Fahrenheit country, so 
don't really know much about that. But I guess that's it for the um, the turbo information. I'm going to go out to the garage and show you guys the GSR engine now. We'll do like a size comparison and then talk a little bit about the GSR. So hit that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss this build. This is going to be really cheap and it's going to be an awesome build. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any more questions about anything. Um, I think I covered everything. Uh, shaft play. There's no side to side, back and forth shaft play. Um, and everything seems to turns pretty good. There's no grinding, no chips in the blades or anything. This is a brand new turbo, so there really shouldn't be. And there's no cracks. Everything looks smooth. Everything looks pretty well machined. Um, I know like Boosted Boys runs this exact same turbo. Um, he has a twin turbo on his MR2. And I just saw his video where he's taking that off and he's going with a big single turbo, but these turbos are used a lot. They get a bad rep because they're from China, because they're cheap, because it's not a $1,200 turbo. Everybody thinks it can't make any power or anything like that, but it's been proven over and over and over again that it can. If they blow up, it's $120, and you just buy a new one. A lot of people are worried about shrapnel going through their uh, engines and stuff like that, and these Chinese turbos, they don't cause that. What causes that is the manifold that they're on. If you have a cheap Chinese manifold, a lot of the times the weight of the turbo and a constant, you know, like heat cycles and stuff like that actually corrects the manifolds and pieces of the manifold will go through the turbo and obviously if it goes through the turbo it will um most of the time go out the exhaust you know but if something actually goes inside which would be inside the cold side so like a rock sand or anything like that it can actually chip and tear these blades up and obviously it goes in the turbo where where, where does that lead to it's automatically going to Go through the turbo, come right out the end, into your intake, into your engine, where that starts to damage, you know, like catastrophic, catastrophic failures and stuff. So these cheap turbo, turbos, a lot of, there's a lot of false rumors about them. People that have never even ran them, and they claim that they are just junk. But from personal experience, I've never had any problems with that. So here's a size comparison of the cold side to the engine, and there's a hot side to the engine. It is a really big turbo. I think we're going to still try it and see what happens. We might have to go with the smaller one. That looks like a crack. Oh, anyways. Um, so here's my GSR. Uh, I got this engine for $70, like I said in the last video. We got the crank, the piston rings for 81 millimeter standard size. Pistons just came in. Here's a girdle. You know, we got pretty much everything for the bottom end. I'm using stock pistons and the stock rods as of right now. We're going to probably go out built later. Um, the bores definitely need to be honed and I'm not sure if I want to buy new pistons or just use these pistons. I'm not completely positive on that yet. Um, but I do got new rings, so the bearings and, uh, the hone and everything are still in the mail. I bought a ring compression kit or a ring uh, compressor, whatever you want to call it. Plus uh, ring snap or snap wires. Pliers, ooh, pliers, and yeah, we're gonna start assembling the bottom end. Uh, like I said in the last video, also I gotta hook up on a oil pan, and we'll get the whole bottom end kind of done. And then we have to pick up a head, and then we'll start doing like the turbo stuff. So, guys, hit that subscribe button. Check out the description below. I'm sorry this is more of a talking video, but should you buy one of these turbos? I think yes. I've already used one Max Speeding Rods Turbo and it works great. This turbo looks even better quality than the first one I got. So only time will tell. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, follow this build because this is going to be a huge part in making my uh, horsepower numbers on a stock GSR bottom end. So thanks for watching the video guys. Hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see more, which I hope you guys want to follow more. Uh, hit that like button. Every single like on the video helps with YouTube's algorithm and it puts out my videos more, which then in return gets me a little bit more revenue so I can afford to do fun things a little bit quicker than it would be just saving up money. So, hope you guys enjoy, stay different, and I'll see you guys next time.